name is Autumn and I will be doing a flight attendant Q&A video today. I actually recorded this video twice already. Um, I did both of them the same day. I did one in my uniform that I didn't like and then I did one without my uniform one. I didn't like both of them. Um, I still have both of the videos just in case depending on how this video go but um, I hope this video does me justice because I'm not gonna keep recording this. Um, so I wrote the um, questions down that were asked on my social media because I asked you guys to send me some questions. Um, since I am recording um, on my phone, I'm not able to look at the questions that you guys sent me while I record, so I wrote them down. So if you see me looking down, I'm just looking at my notes I have here. So let's get into the video. So I will just go over the basics. I know some of those questions are probably asked in this and I'm not even gonna look and see if they were, but I'm a flight attendant. Uh, I'm not gonna share with you guys what airline I work for or what base I'm based at. Um, if you know the uniforms of these companies, of these airlines, then I'm sure you're smart enough to figure out where I work. Um, but unfortunately, I'm not gonna disclose that. So I'm just gonna keep that to myself. Um, I am 25 and I did graduate with my bachelor's in fashion, de uh, de ugh, fashion design. Um, then I did the Disney College internship program for eight months and then after that I came home and then I started being obsessed. Before I, be before I came home I was obsessed with being a flight attendant figuring out what I was going to do after I come home from Disney. So after that I started applying for these different um, airlines and I will also put the description down, the link down below in the description box on where you guys can find all the airlines that are hiring. Um, that link will be in my description box so you guys can check that out if you are interested in being a flight attendant. So the first question that was asked was um, what made you want to become a flight attendant and like I said I was at Disney doing my Disney College internship program so the reason why I did that internship program was because I really didn't know exactly what I wanted to do after college I know I wanted to do I know I still want to pursue my degree with fashion and do things in that field um, but I needed more time to figure out what I wanted to do and I didn't want to just be at home you know working a regular regular job so I took the internship and it was the best decision I've ever made um, besides being homesick and sad and uh, you know that anyway I still was trying to figure out exactly what I wanted to do with my degree so I became obsessed with um, being a flight attendant and how that happened was I follow a youtuber named Ashley if you're watching this hi Ashley um, she also did the internship at Disney too um, and she's also became a flight attendant after that as well so um, she kind of just inspired me after watching cuz I watch all her videos um, her vlogs her Disney vlogs and you know all that so I kind of like followed her on Instagram after being one of her subscribers on her YouTube channel and then became um, you know interested in being a flight attendant and I thought it was pretty cool because I for me personally the way I took it was uh, I was going to also use that to help me continue to pursue my dream with fashion traveling to New York for New York Fashion Week um, LA for LA Fashion Week, doing things that will, you know, still help me network and get out there and show my craft and uh, meet with people who are interested in the same thing that I went to school for. And I'm still working on different sources of income and doing things that will also make my degree useful. Uh, I don't want to just waste it and just say I'm a flight attendant and that's just that. I am still seeking to use my degree um, so yeah while I was there I literally became with that thought just like made me be obsessed with being a flight attendant being able to travel being able to um, network and meet people who are also in the fashion industry so I became obsessed and I watched literally so many um, flight attendant videos I watched tons of them from 
every airline or if there were videos for every airline for like American Delta um, PSA Envoy there's so many um, videos out there on YouTube that have flight attendant vlogs and Q&A's and how to get the interview how to do the face-to-face -face, what to wear to a flight attendant interview so it's like I literally became obsessed and I just applied myself and just applied and kept applying kept applying I had um, interviews face to faces that I did not get but I'm so happy that the airline that did pick me I'm so happy they chose me to be their flight attendant so now I'm here um, so yeah that's what made me become what made me become a flight attendant how do you keep from getting a cold or the flu when you spend so much time in the air? So um, during training, they told us that we will get sick really quick, the, probably like the first two months. Thankfully, I got sick as soon as I graduated. Um, I would say like right after my IOE was when I actually got sick. And I was sick for like, it felt like two weeks. It felt like a month because even after all the symptoms were gone, I still had a small cough that was so annoying. Like the cough was just so annoying and I would just have a little cough and it would just stay after all the other things. So I, yeah, I was so miserable. I was sick. Luckily I was just on call. I only had to do one trip. Um, when I was sick but I was on call for majority of the time I was sick so I really didn't have to go to work um, and we'll get more into what does on call mean and all that but yeah I was sick I was drowning myself with medicine and drinking tea and I had the best help to help me feel better so I'm so thankful um, that I had that person there to help me feel better because I was really sick and the cough it finally went away I would say maybe two weeks ago because I had that cough for the longest it was so annoying um how do you refrain from getting sick again I would just say you want to make sure you are uh, I keep saying dehydrated you want to make sure you're hydrated you have all your fluids your water um, your sleep uh, I sleep a lot when I'm on my off days or on call I like to sleep in until like 11:30 noon um, the only time I really can't sleep past 11:30 sometime um, but the only time I can sleep past noon sleep past 1 is if I'm sick or I stayed up to like 7 because sometimes I, I will stay up watching YouTube or watching Netflix and I'll just be up all until the Sun comes back up um, you don't want to do that because you never know if you're gonna get called in for work and you want to have a good sleeping schedule so that you know you're going to get enough rest when it's time to work so i'll just say um making sure you're hydrated making sure you get enough sleep after you've done all that because that's really important then you will take your vitamins and your um emergency packets and your hauls and all the vitamin c whatever you take to make sure your immune system is strong you would do all that um, how do you react during turbulence? So I haven't really experienced severe turbulence when I've flown um, on my trips. It's just like minor. Um, do you have medical training as a flight attendant? So as a flight attendant, you will get trained to um, know what to do in certain situations. You uh, On every airplane, there are emergency equipment that will also help you with situations like that. So you have the blood pressure cup, you have the um, AED, machine then you have masks for uh, oxygen breathing mask oxygen tubes um you know there's like emergency kit metal, uh, first aid kit um infection kit there's a lot of things on the aircrafts that help with those situations they will train you on um cpr i was cpr first aid certified right before training so i kind of knew exactly what to do um, but they will refresh anybody's memory who's already certified or if you're not certified at all you will be um have that experience when you are in training and also there are tons of people who leave nursing jobs um medical field jobs that are trained in that area too who become flight attendants so if something does happen you won't be alone you have other flight attendants who are um, with you who may have more experience than you and also if there are 
if there are any flight attendants who have experience, um, there will always be someone on board. I kid you not, at least a nurse, a doctor, someone that is that has that training. So you can always get on the PA and make an announcement and then I'm sure somebody will come for it. So is what airline I work for and what base I'm based at. I will skip those questions because I already answered that. Does the flight crew know who the air marshals are on their flight? Um, yes, the flight attendants will know who the air marshals are on the flight. Whoever is the lead flight attendant, the captain and the first officer will brief well, more, normally they will brief the whole crew, but sometimes the captain decides to just brief the lead flight attendant and then that lead flight attendant will then have to pass the messages down to all the other flight attendants like the weather, the count, um, not the count, the weather, um, the time, flight time, um, if there are any FFDOs on the plane, um, FDDO, I think it's FFDO, whatever, the flight deck officer um any armed you know air marshals whatever so that is the captain's job to let the lead flight attendant or the flight attendants know who that is um what is my schedule like and are you enjoying your career so far so far so my schedule is very flexible right now i'm so thankful i feel it's kind of weird though like coming from a job where you work every day or basically every day to a job where you don't know if you're gonna work or you don't work at all but you're still getting paid um it's kind of new to me so as a flight attendant as a new flight attendant um most flight attendants i would say 90 percent uh graduate training on reserve and then you have some airlines who they graduate with the line but majority of flight attendants that are new graduate on reserve reserve means you're strictly on call uh, you get paid regardless if they call you or not um, it's a certain amount that you get paid for and uh, you're on call for 14 hours I know for my airline on call 14 hours so for example, I'm gonna call tomorrow from 3.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. And from that time, they can call you between any time. They can call you at 3.31, they can call you at 4.30, they can call you at 5.28, you know what I'm saying? But um, regardless if they call you or not, you still get paid um, your money because you're guaranteed a certain amount um, each month. So if you don't fly at all the whole month, you know what I'm saying you still get paid so that's kind of good we get around like 10 to 12 days off a month you can bid what days you are you want off depending on your seniority um, you will get the days that you choose depending on like I said your seniority in your company and are you enjoying your career so far so yes I am enjoying my career so far um it's amazing I, I don't feel like stressed out about it every job i've had since i graduated college i felt like you know i just wanted to quit every single day i would complain every single day i want to leave this is not you know I, I don't like the feeling of um working for someone else or feeling like i'm being watched and as a flight attendant you are technically working for that company but you don't you, you don't feel like someone's watching over you um like like, what are you doing? Did you do this? Did you do that? But you will have some flight attendants who are just, you know, they think they're your boss too. So they're going to be like, you know, doing that. You know, those certain coworkers that just be over the top with their job. You may have some of those as a flight attendant too. Um, but, but most of the time, you don't, no one's watching you. No one's like, you know, you just do, as long as you do your job, you guys will be okay. Is it hard to become a flight attendant? Uh, I would say the only two things that is hard about being a flight attendant is training and actually getting hired. Now, um, besides that, no, being a flight attendant is easy. You do your job, everything you learn in training. Once you get on the uh, floor, once you get in the air, it's like, like you've been doing it for years. That's how easy it is. Um, I will start with getting hired first. So it's hard to get in the doors like it's hard i've had uh i think three um two i had three face-to-faces um before i got hired with 
my airline now. I had tons of video interviews um, that I didn't make past to get to the face to face. Uh, it's just like, and I had my resume changed twice. Um, within that process and it was still hard so i would just say don't beat yourself up about whether you're getting picked or not it's not you because it's really hard it's like a number like a people will say it's like a lottery number lottery pool depending on what airline you choose um it would be harder for you know the more top airline it'll be harder than the you know the low low regional airlines um but even some regionals, it's hard to get into because I had face-to-faces with regionals and I didn't get past, you know, the face-to-face. So many steps that you have to do before you get to the actual in-person interview. You have the application, you have the test assessment, you have the video interview. After that, you have your live interview depending on um, what airline. Sometimes you may have a phone interview depending on the airline and then some airlines fly you out and then some airlines they want you to pay your own way to get there. Um, so if you have the money, extra money to do that and risk not getting hired because you, you, I highly doubt they're going to reimburse you. So if you want to take a chance to, I think, um, well I'm not even going to say any names but I know one airline, um, they don't pay to fly you out so if you have the extra money you really feel really feel confident that you're going to get that job then fly fly to that interview um so yeah it's hard to get your foot in the door but once you once you get your foot in the door i say if you want to change your airline if it was an airline that you originally didn't want then i will say um wait six months just to get more experience or a year just to see um, how the airline you're, you got hired with goes and then you know move on to a different airline but once you get your foot in the door that aviation um, experience on your resume being a flight attendant will well I would say it will definitely boost your chances to get hired in another um, airline sometimes not though some flight attendants who were flight attendants were a company try to apply for a different company and they still didn't get chose so it just depends on them like I said it's that's the hardest part um training is hard it's like college all over again finals week every day like literally flight attendant training as soon as you get there first day you have a test um depending on the airline I know my airline first day I had a test um before we went to training they sent a packet in the e in our email it's like a study packet we have to study so I have to work you know, try to save more money before training. Also, making sure I studied. Um, yeah. And with my airline, you only get two tries to do your test. So if you fail one test, you have one more try. You have to do a retry. And then you have one more try to fail. So if you fail again, then you get sent home. So you really have to buckle down when you get the training. You have to, you know, put your priorities, you know, get all that together and be there for what you came for um i think training was hard it was you know being away from home for four and a half weeks in a whole different state and um having long hour days every day classes you wake up at 7 a.m won't get back to your hotel room until 7 p.m sometimes 6 30 sometimes 5 30 12 hour 11 hour days um yeah it was rough it's like college finals week every day every day every day you're studying every day you're you know doing what you have to do to make sure you get your wings how quick was the hiring process so my hiring process um i say it was like three months i had the application process after the application i got the video interview uh invite probably like two days after that um, then after that, I got an email for the face-to-face -face, and have to um, sign up for what face-to-face -face I wanted. And then after that, I went to the interview, um, did that, and then they called me. So in the interview um, part, the face-to-face, -face, it's like a big room full of, it was like, I think, 50 of us that was there in one room, like a conference room. And um, they go over every detail you want to know, like the pay, the benefits, what to expect blah 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 how long is training blah 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 all like like a job orientation um and then after that they do questions q a if you have any questions they ask questions to get the answer and then they split us off in groups and then they do one-on-one -on -one. that was there interviewing us so you go back in the hallway they call you in there one by one like the, each person gets their own person 
so after that I probably got called maybe like four days or five days later they called me and I knew I got the job because when when that number popped up on my phone it was a long distance number and I, they already told us what number it would be from so I was so excited I don't um so I would say my process took maybe like two months um some airlines their training is like six weeks three weeks four weeks five depends you just have to make sure you research and figure out what airline you want to work for and see if you can handle being away from home for that long see if you uh making sure your bills will be paid for that long um do you need to take a drug test yes how did you choose the airline you worked for you work for so i researched all the airlines to kind of compare. Once I researched each one, I kind of did the process of elimination to figure out which one I wanted to work for. I knew I didn't want to move out of my state yet because, you know, I wanted to save money, the you know, finances. So I wanted to find a find an airline that had a base where I'm from. So that was one. Um, you want to search the community of the airline, you know, make sure you the people there are nice people. It's not all about the name of the company you work for, but about your work environment. Like, is it a lot of gossip? Is it a lot of drama? You know, are people get, dropping like flies, getting hired, getting fired? You know, you want to check on the benefits, you want to make sure um, the benefits are okay with you, if they have 401k, if, um, the benefits as far as if they have a union or not. I know some people love uh, work with airlines that don't have unions and they're fine. And some people who want to have a union, make sure they're protected. You know, their job is protected. You want to make sure how the schedule works. If you're going to be on reserve for six months or if you're going to be on reserve for three years. All right, so we get our schedules. Like we know we're on call, but we don't know if we're working. You know what I'm saying? Versus having the trip. You know, tomorrow you're gonna go to Atlanta at 7 a.m. You get back at three. You know what I'm saying? That's reserve and having a line. That's what. That's the difference between the two. Um, also, bidding. Like I said, you can bid your trips. You can bid your schedule, and based on seniority, you will get whatever you bid for. Um, now, when you do apply for other airlines, you will have to do their training over. What were the requirements before training? Uh, just a drug test, background check. I just brought my resume and uh, I think that was it. How much do you get paid as being a flight attendant? You guys can Google that and Google whatever airline you wanna work for. That's what I did. I wrote American, Delta, United, JetBlue, Spirit, blah, 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 blah. And like put what they, what each one pay and do you receive paid training so yes my airline paid us if i did miss some questions or if i missed your question you can dm me on instagram at hey it's autumn and i will write back to you so whatever airline you want to work for research that so if you want to work for spirit you put spirit flight attendant video whatever american flight attendant video and it will pop up you have if, if there are any out there of that airline, you will just see that listed below. I will put the link in my description box on the um, airlines that are currently hiring at this moment. If you like this video, you thought it was helpful, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I will keep doing these um, um, videos about flight attendant and any tips and tricks that can get you guys into being a flight attendant so yeah that's it for this video and um i will see you guys in my next video hold on